Yesterday, I know we talked about how we thought it transpired with the NBA, ESPN, Rachel Nichols, how she was pulled from the NBA finals. Um, you know, we weren't on the call. We don't even know if there was a call between ESPN and, and the mothership at the NBA. Mm -hmm. I mean, but we know how things work. Mm -hmm. so, so they were, somebody mm -hmm. was on the phone, okay? Maybe they used back mm -hmm. channels. Maybe they were on WhatsApp. I don't know. But somebody communicated something and suddenly Rachel was, was pulled. The jump was back, um, her show mm -hmm. on ESPN. Um, but it also struck me that, you know, Adam Silver, we're in the middle of the finals. Um, so he did weigh in. He was asked about it at, you know, their standard press conference. I think we should play his comments mm -hmm. and um, kind of pontificate on what he had to say. Fun to be this is just a, a really unfortunate situation. I think it's particularly unfortunate that two women in the industry are pitted against each other. People recognize that people make mistakes, that careers shouldn't be erased you know, by, by a single comment. Hmm. Wow. By a single a comment. Lot, once again. <clears throat> mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So go ahead. You... Uh, yeah. I mean, part of what he says may be true. I, look, I don't think ESPN pitted the two women against each other in that sense. When Rachel said what she said, and she said and put Maria's name in her mouth. She didn't have to put Maria's name in her mouth. She could have just said, you know what? This is in my contract. Uh, they promised this to me. How can I get past this? How can I get my job back in that sense? She could have left it at that. But the, the bigger issue here is, Sharon, organizations allowing it to get to this point where they feel like maybe at times, and we know it happens, and Maria earned her job, first of all. Let me let you know that for sure. She's supposed to be in that position because of her background. Do the research. She's great at it. And, you know, obviously she's doing a great job doing it. But they feel like sometimes they need to make these mass diversity hires because of their issues in the past. And that causes the environment of conflict where Sharon and we've been there before, right? where you get a job, you're qualified for it, you're supposed to be in that job, you deserve that job, but because you get that job over somebody else who has been at that station or network for a long period of time who feel like they're entitled in a sense because maybe they paid their dues and maybe they're qualified, and you come in as this so-called diversity hire, there is going to be that conflict that that person has against you. We've seen it happen before, and we're going to see it happen numerous times until they do a better job of evening these things out where we're not talking about all of a sudden having to make up for lost time. I got an example I want to tell you about, but I want to get your thoughts. My thoughts are they just haven't changed much. And I, you know, Adam Silver mm. did whatever his diplomatic thing is. He obviously has some a fondness for Rachel Nichols because even in that clip without saying her name, he said, you know, one mistake, shouldn't erase a career, whatever. I, I don't mm -hmm. think people should be canceled for one mistake unless they are completely, you know, ridiculous and this is exactly who they are, <laughs> whatever. Mm -hmm. You're just not gonna get me, and this is gonna sound callous, to care about Rachel Nichols, okay? Mm, and you're, no, you're not gonna get me to go down this rabbit hole where I'm going to turn Maria into a victim. What was said about her was mm. ignorant and wrong. Mm -hmm. And she's gonna be mm -hmm. great and we're gonna continue to support her. I don't care, listen, I ate too much during the pandemic and now I'm fat. Facts, okay? I ate too much, I can't ignore the food. That's why I'm relentless in my focus on ESPN. They pitted two women, tomorrow it could be two other women. All I'm saying, and they've been doing that, by the way, for years, okay? They pitted mm -hmm, black mm -hmm. against white. I, it is my personal belief that they played that inside game where we're not part of those conversations as people of color, and they pulled this woman aside who had something in her contract and said, look, I know it's not fair. Rock yep. with us for a minute. We got to do this. Mm -hmm. We got Instead of mm -hmm. if they did not believe Maria Taylor was the best candidate for the job, they wouldn't have given it to her or they shouldn't have given it to her. And then they should have been honest, though, if they did with Rachel Nichols.
Okay, so you're yeah. not going to get me to dissect Rachel Nichols. You're not going to get me to dissect the timing, the leak, the this, the that, the woman who leaked. The I don't care. I nope. care about because in in a matter of time, we'll all move on. Maria will retire. Mm -hmm. Rachel will retire, or they'll be retired. You know, in this business, very few people get to choose their exit strategy, and we'll be on to the next person who they do this to. The, a best predictor of someone's behavior is their previous behavior. And with ESPN, we have since its inception, their ongoing behaviors. And that's what I'm talking about. So you say, I believe I was there. I know. And mm -hmm. I saw firsthand the experience that this has brought about when it causes this conflict. When I first got to ESPN, and I hope these guys don't mind me telling this, but they've had no black coordinator producers, meaning senior producers, none. Not, I think they may have had one, and they needed some because they were under pressure. Guess what they did? They hired five or six black men all at the same time, threw them in the mix, very qualified black men. As a matter of fact, two works at our network right now. I'm not going to say their names, but two work at our network, and they can tell you about their own personal experience being at ESPN. Do you realize the type of treatment that those black men got while they were at ESPN around 2003, 2004, when they first came in there, uh, and the vitriol and the hate uh, and the lack of support that they got from a lot of the people who had been there for a period of time, producers who felt like, oh, I am entitled, it is my right, I am next in line to get that situation. And you don't think for a second that some of the executives at ESPN, when they made that hire, said we need to make this hire to those people explaining why they didn't get that job. That causes that type of conflict. That t causes that type of vitriol. And they didn't get the respect. They didn't get love. They didn't get support. And as a matter of fact, it affected performances overall because when you come in and you're supposed to be in charge and you're supposed to be somebody's manager, but they're not listening to you because they don't respect you because they have been made to feel like you're not ready or deserving of that job, that is a problem. And that is the problem not only at ESPN, but other networks and other companies around this country that needs to be fixed. Bottom line. Yeah. So we'll, well see. But that, that was back in 2003, 2004. Here we are, 2021, 18 years later. You still just in the same said, spot. You just said what I just said. And uh, how long were you at ESPN? Because I'm going somewhere with this. Uh, not, almost nine years. Almost nine years. That's a pretty good run. Um, ESPN, regardless of what other sports networks are out there, is the one, is the standard, has a monopoly on this thing. It is what's in everyone's mind when you think of a sports network even today. That's sad to me, okay? You asked me a rhetorical question, at least I think it was, about do I know how they were treated? It sounds really gross. Mm. But my rhetorical mm. question is, do you think the experience that you and other black men we love and women experience at ESPN is any different than the filth we go through every day? There are places out there that are even more disgusting. And by now, you mm -hmm. know how I feel about the disgustingness that is ESPN, okay? I'm telling you, there is some that top it. So we mm -hmm. get it. So I'm not going to get in the weeds about Rachel Nichols and her white privilege private comments to LeBron's advisor. I don't care that much about her. I don't care right. that much about the jump, the situation. I just don't care. This is a situation, and this is what I do care about, that is identical to people working at blue chip companies across America and mom and pop stores everywhere. It's disgusting, it's valid, and when we sit up here and talk about two women who may be supremely qualified or just kinda qualified, to me, it takes away from where the responsibility lies. And that's with those mm -hmm. gross executives at ESPN. It's about them. What are they losing yeah. this morning? What mm -hmm. has been mm -hmm. taken from them? Right. Nothing. 
and still no apologies about what they've done in this situation and other networks. And like you mentioned, it's not just an ESPN problem. It's across the country and not just in broadcasting, but in all major organizations. We've seen it, but things have to change. Maybe putting the spotlight on this could start that change. But once again, what I went through or what the CPs went through was 18 years ago. Let's see if it changes this time.